My Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my garden so fair? You may live in this garden If you keep the grasses green And I'll return in the cool of the day Now is the cool of the day Now is the cool of the day This earth is a garden The garden of my Lord And he walks in his garden in the cool of the day. Then my Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my pasture so green? You may live in this garden If you will feed my lambs And I'll return in the cool Now is the cool of the day. This earth is a garden, the garden of my Lord, and he walks in his garden in the cool. Then my Lord, he said unto me, Do you like my garden so free? You may live in this garden If you'll keep the people free And I'll return in the cool of the day Now is the cool Now is the cool of the day. This earth is a garden, the garden of my Lord, and he walks in his garden in the cool. Good to sing together again. Oh, it sure is. Oh. <laughs> and what a song. That one's, of course, by Gene Ritchie. You know, we've lost a lot of people this year. Yeah. And I'm thinking of, of her son. Yeah, who we just lost recently. Peter, yeah. So in the meantime, we haven't lost you, hopefully. You're still with You're us there. after that first song for Yay. our old songs concert. Yay. <laughs> we're playing some old songs and some new songs tonight. That's right. Should so, be a uh, different sort. We were just talking about... When we sat here not long ago to record the the um, the festival, festival. and right. now here we are for a little concert. Yeah. In fact, I'm wearing. You're wearing the necklace, right? Yeah. That, that Howie, I helped Howie pick out for you yeah. at the festival, yeah, and I'm wearing a, my little undershirt. I've got my big girl undershirt on today as a purple shirt I got at the festival. That's one of the things we missed about actually being at festivals is being able to spend some Money. of our hard-earned pay. <laughs> Most <laughs> Give it of back it, to usually. The festival. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to continue with a, a song that I wrote a couple years back, and uh, it's, it's still something we need to keep a line on. Um, uh, we, we live in polarized times, um, and uh, we have choices to make every single day in, on which way we're going to go and what we're going to choose to do. And this song sort of speaks to this. After I heard Deval Patrick say something like, when did we become a nation that shouts our anger and whispers our kindness? So... Some of us are setting out to turn that around, right? Mm -hmm. This is called Everyday Gestures. Ooh. 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 The world is shattered 
by greed The undeserving are left in need Children for sale, whole countries bleed The land is abused with poison seed Yet human kindness flows unchecked It makes space for people to feel respect Sends brave souls into the heart of neglect Where they rebuild spaces and lives The doctor in the village, the children outside It's the everyday gestures that turn the tide The everyday gestures that turn the tide Sing that with us It's the everyday gestures that turn the tide The everyday gestures that turn the tide to make too little work and feeds on the take the children hungry so much at stake it's enough to make anyone's spirit break yet love survives in the bleakest place it shines right out from your lover's face from friends who hold you in sacred space from each generous act of healing grace just a tender touch in a wakeful night it's the everyday gestures that make it all right the everyday gestures that make it all right it's the everyday gestures that make it all right the everyday gestures that make it all right Shudders with pain from endless wars for private gain. The peace descends like timely rain when love compels us to try once again. Sometimes it's just a dance in the street or a meal on the doorstep when you come home beat. It's wherever we conquer the mean with the sweet, where the compassion enters for the troubles. It's loving kindness, the hand unfurled It's the everyday gestures that change the world The everyday gestures that change the world It's the everyday gestures that change the world The everyday gestures that change the world It's the everyday gestures that change the world The everyday gestures that change the world Everyday gestures. Well, speaking of everyday gestures. How much wood have you lugged today, Claudia? <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list. It's on the short list for later. We just moved to a place where, alas, we don't have a wood stove anymore, but we have a couple of really nice fireplaces, well-made old fireplaces. So we are uh, putting those to use, and you, of course, have your wood stove. That's right. Only she had to move her wood. She had wood at her old place. And so not only did they stack it there, but then they had to pick it up and move it and restack <clears throat> it. We had, to, we had to move it 12 miles away, you know, but we, we did a lot of work on that wood, and we were not oh, leaving man. it behind. There's a lot of warmth in that wood. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So here's the tune with a great little uh, chorus in it, which you'll learn when we get there. From Dylan Bowen. In the fall of the year, when you feel the winter near and the skies are clear, it surely isn't good to sit by the fire and want to soak it higher when you should be cutting more wood. From November to March, the winter winds are harsh on the fields and the marsh. They're covered up with snow when you trudge to the shed and you have to scratch your head because the dead plain piles get low. No wood, hardwood, firewood, drywood. There ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood. We could, you should be out. Cutting more wood when the 
the kindling is dwindling. Solomon logs get soggy, oh, and ricks of sticks and racks of stacks. You have to wonder where they go in barnfuls of armfuls. They only last a week or so, and then you'll be hurting for wood. Oh, and sassafras, it burns too fast. It starts the fire but never lasts. And swamp oak likes to smoke. You blow it till you think you'll choke. But hickory is just the tree to remind you of the ecstasy of having a pile of good wood. Your wood, there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood. We could, you should be out cutting more wood. Oh, the scandia and the yodel brands are made so far across the sea. The fisher kind and timberline are made here in the country, but of all the rest put to the test. The stove I like the very best, the one my uncle Wadey made for me. He took an oil drum and welded some piping from the septic tank and for an aft he cut a draft and then he made a damper crank with an old broom from the back room and painted it fire engine red and said now watch it consume consume what hardwood firewood drywood there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without one we could you should be out cutting more Spring rolls around and I spade the muddy ground I have often found. I lay my saw away, the shed is empty, and yet you can make a bet that I forget to be cutting more wood. The old timers say to split a little every day and stack it away mm -hmm, that's to right. season well. But from March to November, I rarely do remember, and December will find me in a rut. Without wood, hardwood, firewood, drywood, there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood. So we could you should be out cutting more, throw it in the oil bin. What do you think your saw's for? You will always need some more. You get warm singing that song, yep, too. Yeah, yeah right? That's another warm. way to warm up. Get warm twice. <laughs> oh, I'm going to keep my guitar here for this one. <clears throat> okay. Our friend Kat Eggleston, who lives out on Vashon Island, uh, wrote this beautiful song. Another person that we lost this year, Ethel Polk, who uh, oh, yeah. she lived to be 104, so you can't really complain about a life that long. Uh, well lived up until the very end. And uh, we heard Kat sing this at her 100th, Ethel's 100th birthday party in Chicago, Ethel Fest, we called it. And so uh, we do it for her today, for Ethel and for Kat. And you do it always for I your daughters. My daughters, and, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think she wrote it for her grandfather, actually. Yeah. Her dad. Oh, her dad. Yeah. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. You start. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. I got no other plans. That. <laughs> that was a phone. Oh, no. It was probably your daughter. Oh, no. No, it said unknown name. Oh. It was some horrible <laughs> one. So here we go. Burning sun before you know it's cold. 
coming Here I stand at harvest time Soon it will be snowing When winter trees hold blackbird leaves Then I must be going Oh, the days hurry on Always moving on and on During COVID, I actually got to record an album through some miracle, I think. <laughs> the big miracle is Mark Thayer at Signature Sounds. I think that's the big miracle. <laughs> and um, this song is on it. This, the album's called Old Friends I've Never Met. And it's a compendium of songs about people I've never met, including Henry Box Brown in this song. Henry Box Brown was a slave in the 1840s. He was born, uh, born into slavery, and he ended up working for his master in his master's uh, shop rather than in the fields. And one day he was working and toiling away, and he saw his wife and children being led away in chains, loaded on a wagon, and driven away. He had no idea it was going to happen, and there they went, and he had nothing to say about it, nothing to do about it, and he thought he would kill himself. Um, but he decided no. He knew a man who was a shipper in town who was, uh, had abolitionist tendencies, and he went to him and asked him to build him a box three feet by two feet by two feet eight inches. Three feet by two feet by two feet eight inches. And he got inside that box with nothing more than a, a bladder of water and uh, a couple of hardtack biscuits and had himself shipped express from Richmond, Virginia to Philadelphia, <laughs> where, there were, uh, uh, where there was a Quaker community that agreed to take him in. Wow. And indeed, he got shipped and it took him 24 hours and he made it there in one piece astoundingly. Um, they opened the box up, there he was. But his neck was a little stiff. Um, ben, <laughs> he thought his neck broke along yeah. the way several times. Well, the song talks about the that. The song talks about it, right. So anyway, the result of that was that he ended up writing this song. He wrote the words to the song and used the melody of Old Nellie Gray by Stephen Foster. Um, and Stephen Foster also had abolitionist tendencies, and um, I, I don't know if he ever met Stephen Foster. He might have. But I'm not sure. In any case, um, he spent the rest of his life traveling around the country, um, working for abolition, and also just telling his story. And I just found out the other day that he hired uh, um, an artist, Josiah Wolcott from, uh, from Boston, to paint him 58-foot-tall panels of telling the story. And they were hooked together like in a cranky, so like in a scroll. Yeah, yeah. And, and they scrolled it as he was telling the story. And oh, don't you wish that you could yeah. see those 
those panels. They must have been wonderful. Um, but no one's, they haven't turned up. I, I suspect someday, maybe in some old theater somewhere, they might show up. Really? I keep hoping. But um, anyway, he, he did that. And and, uh, and then he also wrote his autobiography, which is available through Google Books. If you go up to Google Books, it's one of those uh, free books Let's that's been the scanned song. in. Let's do the oh, okay, song. we'll sing the song. <laughs> And has a chorus for you. Here you see a man by the name of Henry Brown ran away from the south to the north, which he would not have done, but they stole away his rights, but they'll never do the like anymore. Brown lay down the shovel and the hole. He did go. No more slave work for Henry Box Brown in the box by express. He did go. The orders they were given, the cars did start away. Roll along, roll along, roll along. Down to the landing where the steamboat lay to bear the baggage off to the north. Brown laid down the shovel and the hole. Down in the box he did go No more slave work for Henry Box Brown In the box by express he did go When they packed the baggage on They turned him on his head And poor Brown liked to have died There were passengers on board Who would like to sit down And they turned the box down on its side Brown lay down the shovel and the hole down in the box he did go no more slave work for henry box brown in the box by express he did go when they got to the cars they threw the box off and down upon his head he did fall then he heard his neck crack and he thought that it was broke But they never threw him off anymore Brown lay down the shovel and the hoe Down in the box he did go No more slave work for Henry Box Brown In the box by express he did go Philadelphia, they said he was in port, and Brown then began to feel glad. He was taken on a wagon to his final destination and left this side up with care. Brown lay down the shovel and the hoe, down in the box he did go. No more slave work for Henry Box Brown In the box by express he did go Then the friends gathered round And asked if all was right As down upon the box they did rap Brown rant answered them saying That yes all was right He was then set free from his pain Brown lay down the shovel and the hoe No more slave work for Henry Box Brown In the box by express he did go Oh, Brown lay down the shovel and the hoe Down in the box he did go No more slave work for Henry Box Brown In the box by, by express he did go Song. Isn't it an yeah. amazing story? Uh-huh. <clears throat> and that story we were lucky to have saved. So many of them got lost. Yes. Ooh, never yeah. written down. Right. Well, he, he you know, sang his own song. And That's right. After. Didn't he like live out his life as a magician too? Yeah, doing yeah, like, yeah. Well, he did all kinds of stuff. Right. But it, it all involved <laughs> traveling on the road and telling stories and anything that would pay him money, I'm sure. 
It's good that he was an extrovert. <laughs> dulcimer on the Hammond B3, something <laughs> happened. <laughs> it soaked up a little of that wah, 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 wah. <laughs> right, yeah. All right. We're going to do a couple of uh, songs in a row here. One is an instrumental of, of just what I, what I was ex experimenting with, the idea of what, what honesty would sound like purely musically, what, what would sound good to me, how honesty would sound. And then uh, into another... Uh, tune of mine that, uh, I don't know, I guess we can dedicate this to QAnon. Let's, let's start there. Why not? <laughs> let's start and end right there. <laughs> Starting with the song, Honesty. Oh, wait a minute. I was in the wrong key there. Yeah, oh. I was like, yeah, yeah, we're up, we're actually up to B minor. Oh, we're, that's right. Yeah, that's that. That's you fun. threw me off that's there, Sally fault. Rogers. It's It's like there was no place to go. I was, where am I going to go? <laughs> ran next? out of notes. This is a very honest performance, as you can see, right? <laughs> it's live. Yeah. Consequences are coming due and it's bound 
to be a shock to you And boy, you never saw it coming Though it was always close at hand I shut tight to the death of rights And now you just can't understand Every snowflake in the avalanche cries in no sense In the end, it's all just willful ignorance And boy, you never saw it coming Though it was always close at hand I shut tight to the death of riots And now you just can't understand Every snowflake in the avalanche cries in no sense In the end, it's all just willful ignorance Where do we go from there, Sally? So? Well, I think it's just, it's, there's no time to feel hopeless. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> this song's written based on the words of Dorothy Day. Ready to start? Yeah. Go. You read a book, one word at a time, one word at a time. You read a book, one word at a time. One stroke at a time, you learn to swim One stroke at a time, then you can cross the pool There's no time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless When there's so much work to do Try it again There's no time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless When there's so much work to do Step at a time, you walk ten miles, one step at a time until your journey's through. You'll build a house, one brick at a time, one brick at a time. You build a house, one brick at a time, and then you enjoy the view. There's no time to feel hopeless, no time to feel hopeless, no time to feel hopeless when there's so much work to do. No time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless When there's so much work to do Time. Fix this world one mess at a time Together we'll all pull through There's no time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless When there's so much work to do There's no time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless No time to feel hopeless When there's so much Work to do. All right. Thanks. Nice singing. I could hear him there, couldn't you? Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. Right. Yeah. It's quite a singing group. Yeah. The, I know. Uh, we know. Yes, we know that. We know that. Oops. We know you're there. Uh, now we're on to another one of your new songs from. Yeah, well, this is actually an old song, well, but yeah. new to you. But. Um, New to you. The question is, do we do it in G or A? A. A, okay. Yeah. Oops. I wrote, I wrote this song as part of a residency that, uh, that I did about songs from, from the Heritage Corridor where we live. And I went to, um, on a cemetery walk, and uh, there was a book that came along with the cemetery walk, and all of the epitaphs from every cemetery in the town of Preston were there. 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands. Anyway, I found uh, a whole family of people who had passed away, uh, a grandfather and three children. And the children were quite young when they uh, passed away, probably of um, communicable diseases that yeah. nowadays we have a vaccine for, oddly enough. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't gotten your vaccine, get it now. And um, they, uh, they fit together into this song. And I sang it in the school that I was working at, and there was one little boy who spent almost all of his time under his desk. He was just, he did not want to participate. He, he just sat under his desk, he didn't talk, and he didn't say anything. But one day I walked in and he said, would you sing the song Epitaph? Epitaph, he called it. Epitaph. It's called Epitaph, but he called it Epitaph. Epitaph. And I said, absolutely. And I sang that song for him. And every time I came in, he asked for me to sing it again. <laughs> And I found out later that he had lost both his parents and other members of his family, um, many of them due to uh, drugs and other problems. And, um, and yet that song brought him out. It was, it was just lovely. So anyway, you can sing along with And then we're going to start with uh, Oh, yes, right? start with Jane. Yeah. Tell him about that. So uh, you can start with a little a bit of a round. We'll, we'll line it out for you, and hopefully you can take it off and, and do it on your own. Um, that sort of came to me just uh, just a couple weeks after my mom died, which was eight years ago this past January. And, um, and I, I just suddenly I was in the car and I had this, this little melody line in words and I had the strong sense that, that Jane had sent it to me from wherever she was lurking at that point. And um, I didn't know what to do with it. One line is that a whole song and I had, we had a gig that night and it was a singing crew like you all are. And I thought I was in the back room and I went, I think it's around. And so I asked the crew that, now you want to be guinea pigs and try this out with me? And they went, yeah. And, and this is where, that was where uh, Mato Midai, Minnesota, <laughs> uh, the Unitarian Church, Jane's Around was born. And oh. so we're going to start with that and then go into Etipath. Etipath, yeah. <laughs> right, let's see. Uh, we're going to just do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. We're born, we live, we die, we're gone, but love goes on and on. We're born, we live, we die, we're gone, but love goes on and on. We're born, we live, we die, we're gone, but love goes on and on. Get it now? We're born, we live, we die, we're gone, but love goes on and on. We're born, we live, we we're born, die, we we're gone, live, but we love die, goes on gone, and on. Goes on we're and born, on. we live, we we're die, born, we live, we but die, love goes on and on, goes on and on and on. Fare thee well, sweet bud of beauty, little Eliza, fare thee well. Thou wast too pure and lovely here on earth to dwell. We shall meet again. We shall meet again. We shall meet again. It will not be long. We shall meet again. We shall meet again. We shall meet again, it will not be long. Her little form lies buried here, her spirit's gone to heaven above. T'was hard to part and shed a tear for one by us so well beloved. We shall meet again, we shall meet we shall meet again, it will not be long. We shall meet again, we shall meet again, we shall meet again, it will not be
And the heaven thy spirit shrineth We can almost deem thee near We shall meet again We shall meet again We shall meet again It will not be One of the things I love out here, living in New England now, um, are the, the cemeteries, those, those old cemeteries. They, they really do tell stories. Incredible yeah. stories, yeah. When you can read them, when you can't even yeah. read the stones anymore. Yeah. Where, where Sally lives, where I recently moved from, I, I, I love too that they use the word, um, like it's the old Abington burying grounds. Right. Like cemetery is a French word that's kind of like a euphemism. Exactly. You know, it means resting place, but, right. but burying ground that's, just really tells we, you where you we are. You know what's up there or what's down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that made me happiest, um, are we there? My sharpie. There we are. Okay. So uh, was was when when the Georgia runoffs happened, and um, of course both Democrats won. That was great in and of itself. But what was really great is in in John Lewis's home state. That the the two winners of the of the runoffs were um, were his former intern and his his former pastor, and I thought that was yeah. just one of the most wonderful things that day, one of the most joyful things going on. Yeah. And so uh, this song was inspired by John Lewis after I heard him tell his story of being um, <clears throat> at the bridge in Selma the day of the march. I wrote this on the eve of the uh, 50th anniversary of the march from Selma, and obviously we have still got some walking to do. And it's got a great chorus for you in it too. Should we start with the chorus? Okay. Sure. Still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge until we turn them around. Started out peaceful, just like they planned. 600 people walking hand in hand. Two by two, they made their way into that bloody fray. We're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge until we turn them around. Oh, oh, oh. silent marchers, Montgomery bound. The right to vote, their common ground. Selma behind what lay ahead would leave three people dead. Oh, we're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge until we turn them bottom of the ridge. Old Edmund was a clansman and here's the shame. The bridge still bears his name. Yeah, we're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge until we turn them around. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. 
your song that inspired me in part to write this next one. Oh, yeah, when I think about it, they're, they are, that's an honor. Well, they are definitely connected. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. This song was written on January 6th, immediately after I heard that <clears throat> Warnock and Ossoff had, Warnock for sure had won and Ossoff probably had won those elections. And a friend of mine um, emailed me, she said, well, it's fine that they won, but Stacey Abrams is the one who should be getting the credit. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Stacey Abrams, she ran for uh, the governor of, of Georgia in 2017 against the secretary, then Secretary of State, who was definitely in a, in a position of, um, what do you call it, conflict of interest. He uh, did all kinds of uh, voter suppression out of the Secretary of State's office, and um, it was just a neck and neck uh, uh, race, and she lost by 50,000 votes. Now, some people would be crybabies and say, no, 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 no I, I won, I won. Or but, worse. Or worse, yes, but, but not Stacey Abrams. She started an organization called Fight Fair and just organized the heck out of Georgia to, and heck, actually, in, in turn, the whole US, <laughs> yep. and um, got people voting in Georgia for, the, for that senatorial runoff. And, um, and the results we now know. So this is a thank you song to Stacey Abrams. <laughs> and I, ha I have to warn you in advance, it is an earworm, and so you're gonna find yourself singing the chorus. For but then so's the next one. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll leave him with a lot of earworms yeah, yeah. tonight. Let's see, So it goes like this. Stacy Abrams, what have you done to Georgia? Stacy Abrams, we could use a few more of ya. Voter suppression didn't stop you. Stolen election didn't stop you. Blatant racism didn't stop you. Georgia has turned blue. Stacy Abrams, what have you done to Georgia? Stacy Abrams, we could use a few more of ya. Thousands heard your quiet roar. They went knocking door to door. Registered voters more and more. Now Georgia has turned blue. Stacy Abrams, what have you done to Georgia? Stacy Abrams, we could use a few more of ya. Show Georgia what to do. Got some help from the nation to convince the donors to come through. Now Georgia has turned blue. Stacy Abrams, what have you done to Georgia? Stacy Abrams, we could use a few more of ya. Thanks to you from our great nation, you have built a strong foundation. Now take a well-earned short vacation. Now Georgia has turned blue. Stacy Abrams, what have you done to Georgia? Stacy Abrams, we could use a few more of ya. Stacy Abrams, what have you done to Georgia? Stacy Abrams, we could use a few more of ya. We could use a few more of ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Lucky, lucky when a song like that happens. Yeah. It's, so it's one of your one of your pandemic. It, what of your pandemic hits? Was what, my yeah. only pandemic hit. Yeah. I hadn't written anything, uh, and I was feeling very badly about, oh, about not right. having written anything during the pandemic that when I had time. Well, it know. leads us into uh, the next one. The, the next one, which is uh, was actually one of my first. I inspired your. My, my first pandemic. I had a whole kind of pandemic palooza. I've been writing up a storm through the whole thing. Um, 
And so this is one of the first ones that, that hit me. It was during, it was al it's been almost exactly a year since the great toilet paper shortage. <laughs> and when that was, the, that was the thing, that was what everyone was talking about. And um, there was none. And so you got the huge, you started getting the huge rolls. Yeah, we got and, the huge and, commercial rolls. And, and then Sally gifted Mark and me, or actually re-gifted us with, with a bidet, which it was the first time in my life, suddenly you were seeing bidet ads all over Facebook, right? <laughs> That's right. And because it was part of the great toilet paper shortage. So I woke up in one of my fevered dreams that I had all through the pandemic with, uh, with this song in my head. And of course, I, I wrote it down and, and, uh, and, and did it. Um, Toot sweet, you know, with a band in the box and, and, a, and a videotape and lip syncing in, in my bathroom in front of my shower curtain. But since then, Sally has learned it with me, and so we're going to do it for you now because, uh, uh, well, it needs to be sung together in, in memory of the great toilet paper shortage in hopes that it doesn't happen again. <clears throat> Let's see, what key are we doing? It, uh, it doesn't really, we'll do it. Uh, is that good? Yeah. <clears throat> Here we go. And of course, chorus for you. Bidayo. Bideo, time has come and me got to go now. Bideo, bidet, my bidet, my bidet, my bidet, my bideo. Time has come and me got to go now. Having a bidet is a pertinent issue. Time has come and me got to go now. Keep me from hoarding too much toilet tissue. Time has come and we got to go now. It will provide some hygienic traction. Time has come and we got to go now. Clean as a whistle after peristaltic action. Time has come and we got to go now. Put my money right in the bank. Time has come and me got to go now Instead of pumping out my septic tank Time has come and me got to go now Bideo, bideo Time has come and me got to go now Bideo, bideo, my bideo, my bideo, my bideo, my bideo Time has come and me got to go now Fancy ones with dryers and multiple sprayers. The time has come and me got to go now. One simple nozzle is the answer to my prayers. The time has come and me got to go now. Come, Mr. Tallyman, see my usage dwindle. Time has come and me got to go now. Whole paper roll instead of empty spindle. Time has come and me got to go now. One spritz, two spritz, three spritz four time has come and me got to go now rinse off the nozzle and she's ready for more time has come and me got to go now bideo bideo time has come and me got to go now bideo bideo my bideo my bideo my bideo my bideo Time has come and me got to go now. <laughs> we have to do our own laughing. Was that was that fun for you too? I was hope that as it fun was for fun you as it was for us? Yeah. That's uh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mark keeps trying to get me to use a laugh track on my music house, but I refuse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you make your own laugh track. Yeah. Or the or the cheering like in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's time for our advertisement for the evening. We both oh, have uh, websites. They're just our name dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can find any of our recordings there, the two of ours together and each of us separately. And so feel free to go go visit there. That's our, our CDs are there. All of my past videos and yours are on yours, too. And the donation vessel, the donation station is there at the website. And mm -hmm. uh, um, and we just are so thrill that Joy asked us to be part of the series. Absolutely. Um, Thank you so, so much. That we're carrying this on. We're holding space for this series and more festivals to come. And, um, and I, 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 hope, uh, I hope all of you feel the same way. I mean, we're just, we're just rolling toward it. We're rolling slowly but steadily toward it. Absolutely. So we want to leave you with a couple of things here. Um, because we've lost a lot of people this year, the first song sort of speaks to that. Um, it speaks of friends on both sides of the veil, I guess. Uh, and then the second one is a song, uh, words actually, a little poem written by Henri uh, 
Frederick Amiel, a Swiss philosopher in the 1800s that I put a melody to and kind of made a little madrigalish thing out of it. And Sally's going to sing with me and we'll go through it a few times so that you can work out a part. That's what I love about uh, the, the old songs crew. They're very, um, they're very creative. They're, they're always throwing in. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they don't wait to be told what to sing or, or yeah. yeah. So we're going to do them uh, kind of back to back. And I just want to say that um, for, for Dear Friends, the second song, we want to dedicate this tonight, especially to Monica Vale, whose birthday is tonight. And um, <clears throat> Will told me that hopefully a lot of the, the women she took her famous uh, Anderson Lake 54-day canoe odyssey with in 1990 are also listening tonight. So um, singing this for Monica and, and her friends and, and, and us and all of our friends who are, who are helping keep us afloat during this crazy pandemic. Crazy time. Yeah. Farewell, my friends, I'm bound for Canaan. I'm traveling through the wilderness. Your company has been delightful. You do not leave my mind distressed. I go
Thank you. Be well. Mm, Be from safe. our hearts to yours. <laughs> Good night.